In section 11.7, we discussed the band-limited white Gaussian channel, where transmission is in continuous time. Consider this model for the channel, where the input is the process x of t, and the noise process z of t, which is added to x of t, and the sum of the two signals is passed through a low-pass filter with bandwidth equal to w. And the output of the filter, y of t, is the output of the channel. In any real system, the output is in some way band-limited. So this is a very reasonable model to look at. In this channel model, both the input and the output are in continuous time. Z of t is a zero-mean white Gaussian noise process with the power spectral density denoted by S z of f equal to n0 divided by 2, where f is from minus infinity to infinity. And this noise process is called an additive white Gaussian noise, or AWGN. In this section, we need some preliminaries from signal analysis. The Fourier transform of a signal g of t is defined as g of f equal to the integral of g of t times e to the power minus j 2 pi f t dt, where t is from minus infinity to infinity. If the Fourier transform of a signal g of t exists, then the signal can be recovered from the Fourier transform as g of t equals integrating g of f times e to the power j times 2 pi f t df, where f is from minus infinity to infinity. g of t is called the inverse Fourier transform of g of f, and the functions g of t and g of f are set to form a transform pair, denoted by this. By convention, the variables t and f are referred to as time and frequency, respectively. There is a certain type of signals which is of special interest. A signal g of t is called an energy signal if the integral of the magnitude square of the signal from minus infinity to infinity is finite. In other words, the energy of the signal is finite. An important property of an energy signal is that the Fourier transform exists. Let g1 of t and g2 of t be a pair of energy signals. The cross-correlation function for g1 of t and g2 of t is defined as r12 of tau, where tau is a dummy time variable, equal to the integral of g1 of t times g2 of t minus tau dt, for t from minus infinity to infinity. For a pair of energy signals g1 of t and g2 of t, the cross-correlation function r12 of tau and the product of g1 of f and g2 star of f form a transform pair, where g1 of f is the Fourier transform of g1 of t and g2 star of f is the complex conjugate of g2 of f the Fourier transform of g2 of t. A process x of t for t from minus infinity to infinity is y sense stationary if the expectation of x of t does not depend on t and the expectation of x of t plus tau times x of t depends only on tau but not on t. For a y sense stationary process x of t, the autocorrelation function is defined as Rx of tau equals the expectation of x of t plus tau times x of t, which does not depend on t, and the power spectral density denoted by Sx of f is defined as the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. That is, the autocorrelation function and the power spectral density of a wide sense stationary process form a transform pair. Let xtyt be a bivariate wide sense stationary process. The cross-correlation functions are defined as rxy of tau 
equals the expectation of x of t plus tau times y of t, and r y x of tau equals the expectation of y of t plus tau times x of t. These quantities do not depend on t, and the cross-spectral densities are defined as their Fourier transforms. Namely, Sxy of f is the Fourier transform of Rxy of tau, and Syx of f is the Fourier transform of Ryx of tau. That is, Rxy of tau and Sxy of f form a transform pair, and Ryx of tau and Syx of f form a transform pair. This is the model of the band-limited Gaussian channel that we have introduced, where the filtering is done at the output. Equivalently, the filtering can be done at the input, and also for the noise process. Here, the input x of t of the channel, which is a general process, is first passed through a band-limited filter with bandwidth equal to w to obtain the process x prime t, and the noise process is passed through the same band-limited filter to obtain the process z prime of t, where x prime of t and z prime of t are added together to obtain y of t, the output of the channel. So y of t is equal to x prime of t plus z prime of t, where x prime of t and z prime of t are filtered versions of x of t and z of t respectively. As such, both x prime of t and z prime of t are band limited to the frequency range from 0 to w, and z prime of t is a band limited white Gaussian noise with the power spectral density equal to n0 over 2 for f from minus w to w and is equal to 0 otherwise. From now on, we are going to regard x prime t as the channel input and z prime t as the additive noise process. That is, we regard this red box as the channel, with the constraints that the input process x prime t is band limited. Later on, we are going to see how we can impose a suitable power constraint on the input process x prime of t. Theorem 11.29 is the celebrated sampling theorem often known as the Nyquist-Shannon Sampling Theorem. Let g of t be a signal with Fourier transform g of f that vanishes for f not in the interval from minus w to w. That is, the highest frequency that g of t can have is w. Then g of t can be reconstructed from the samples as summation i for i from minus infinity to infinity, g of i over 2w times sin of 2wt minus i for all t, where the sin function t is equal to sine of pi t divided by pi t. The sin function is defined to be 1 as t equals 0 by continuity. Note that when t is equal to 0, sine of pi t divided by pi t is equal to 0 divided by 0. Here are some remarks about the sampling theorem. In the reconstruction formula for g of t, the signal g of t is sampled at rate equals 2w because sampling points are taken at intervals of 1 over 2w. The rate 2w is called the Nyquist rate. The sin function t is equal to 0 for every integer i not equal to 0. This is a plot of the function sin of t. At t equals 0, the sin function takes the value 1, and at t equals integer values other than 0, the function takes the value 0. In the reconstruction formula for g of t, the function sin of 2wt minus i can be written as sin of 2w times t minus i over 2w. We see that this sin function is actually a scaled version of the standard sin function, 
and the origin is at i over 2w. Therefore, the value of this sin function is equal to 1 when t is equal to i over 2w and is equal to 0 when t is equal to j over 2w where j is not equal to i. In other words, this sin function vanishes at every sampling point except for the sampling point at t equals i over 2w. This figure is an illustration of the sampling theorem. Here, g of t, represented in red, is equal to the sum of the sin functions at the sampling points, where the height of the sin function of a sampling point is equal to the value of g at that point. Note that the sin functions do not interfere with each other at the sampling points. For example, at the sampling point t equals 0, the sin function centered at t equals 0 is the only sin function contributing to the value of the signal g at t equals 0. Consider the reconstruction formula for g of t and let g i equals 1 over square root 2 w times g of i over 2 w. And psi i of t equals square root of 2 w sinc of 2 w t minus i. Then evidently, g of t is equal to summation i g i times psi i of t. Proposition 11.30 says that psi i of t, i from minus infinity to infinity, form an orthonormal basis for signals which are band limited to the interval from 0 to w. Here is the proof of the theorem. First, consider psi i of t equals square root of 2w, sinc of 2w times t minus i over 2w. Then setting i equals 0, we obtain psi 0 of t is equal to square root of 2w times sin of 2wt. In other words, psi i of t is obtained from psi 0 of t by replacing t by t minus i over 2w. Therefore, psi i of t is equal to psi 0 of t minus i over 2w that is, psi i of t and psi 0 of t are translations of each other, and so they have the same energy. Now consider the transform pair with sin of 2wt being the signal in the time domain, and 1 over 2w times the rectangular function of f of 2w being the signal in the frequency domain where the function rect f is equal to 1 for f between minus 1 half and 1 half and is equal to 0 otherwise. Then Dirac's energy theorem, the energy of this signal in the time domain and the energy of this signal in the frequency domain are the same. And so we have the integral of the square of sin of 2wt dt equal to the square of 1 over 2w times the integral of the square of rec f over 2w df. It is easy to show that the integral of the square of the rec function is equal to 2w, and so the integral of the square of the sin function is equal to 1 over 2w. Note that the integral of the square of the sin function is difficult to evaluate directly. However, by means of Rayleigh's energy theorem, the integral becomes much easier in the frequency domain. Since psi i of t and psi 0 of t have the same energy, these two integrals have the same value, and the integral of the square of psi 0 of t dt is equal to 1, because psi 0 of t is equal to the square root of 2w times sin of 2wt, and the integral of the square of this sin function is equal to 1 over 2w. 
Since the above equation implies that both sine of 2 wt minus i and sine of 2 wt minus i prime have finite energy, we can consider the cross correlation function denoted by r i i prime of tau equal to the integral of sine of 2 wt minus i times sine of 2 w times t minus tau minus i prime dt. In particular, letting tau equal zero, we obtain r i i prime of zero equals the integral of sine of 2 wt minus i times sine of 2 wt minus i prime dt. Now consider this transform pair. From this transform pair, we can easily obtain the Fourier transform of sin of 2 wt minus i by observing that 2 wt minus i is equal to 2 w times t minus i over 2 w. That is, the time is shifted by the amount minus i over 2 w. Then the Fourier transform of sin of 2 wt minus i is equal to 1 over 2 w rec of f over 2 w multiplied by the phase given by e to the power minus j 2 pi f times i over 2 w. Let us call this Fourier transform g i of f. Likewise, the Fourier transform of sin of 2 w t minus i prime is equal to the expression here, with i prime in place of i, and we call this Fourier transform g i prime of f. Then the cross correlation function r i i prime of tau forms a transform pair with the product of g i f and g i prime star of f. And so, r i i prime of tau is the inverse Fourier transform of g i of f times g i prime star of f. Letting tau equal zero, we have r i i prime zero equals the integral of g i of f times g i prime star of f df. We will leave it as an exercise to show that this is equal to zero whenever i is not equal to i prime. For i not equal to i prime, Consider the integral of psi i of t times psi i prime of t dt. Recalling that psi i of t is equal to square root of 2 w times sin of 2 w t minus i, we see that this is equal to 2 w times the integral of sin of 2 w t minus i times sin of 2 w t minus i prime dt. Now, this integral of the two sin functions is equal to r i i prime of zero, which in turn is equal to zero. In summary, we have shown that the energy of psi i of t is equal to one, and for i not equal to i prime, psi i of t and psi i prime of t are orthogonal to each other. This completes the proof of the theorem.